a fisherman named Colin Primrose, falls in love with a Welsh woman who comes to visit him and his island home off the coast of Connemara. And he follows her to her home in Liverpool where they fall into a romance. In the way of a gift, she arranges to have his letters to her from his island home published as a book of verse. And on the eve of his reading from his works to a Liverpool woman's club, he gets the news that his mentor and dearest friend has drowned back home alone. This is from Seamarks by Gardner McKay. I'll uh, say a few words to you and then read you some marks that I wrote at a place as far away from this room as the other side of life. An island called Cliffhorn Head. In my language, the Irish, it would be called Inishindera. There are a number of people who do not understand the sea, and I am one of them. The sea is not a simple place with its currents and strange habits and bears watching. The sea is not a sentimental place to go. It is waiting for you to make a mistake. After all my years on it, I am kin to it, but I'm not married to it. The sea is not a woman after all. My fishing partner is called the McAfee. There never was a man I loved more than the McAfee. Men liked him every way there was to like a man. Ugh, oh, the eyes on him, like two candles burning. In one stroke of his eyes, he could give you all the love you needed to last you a year. He was a grand old man. You should have known him. Anyhow, there's an old fisherman drowned who will live in me forever. When we would go to fish, we might carry a small sail in the cur and set it right. Now, if the seas were running high and the wind turning in sudden gusts, it might carry us out over the wave and down into the veil between the waves. And my heart went down there, and my soul went along too, if I had a soul at the time. Uh, I, I knew we'd rise again, but it always seemed like tomorrow when we'd come above the wave again, and then it was higher than before. And, and we'd perch there a moment, the gale holding us balanced on the new wave, and then it'd be uh, out and down into the dark place between the waves that wants to hold you there, the place where the wind doesn't go, and then you'd be up again, high, balanced, and then out and down all over again. Now, after a while of this, when it looks like you might make it home again and walk along a boreen or duck under a laundry line, you begin to feel strong. And even though the wind is trying to tear your clothes off, you don't mind. You're grinning and the wind is hissing in your ears and you're sailing home. But you should never think you had anything to do with it. You'd be mistaken. Or maybe not. When I was young, a wave so high swept across the narrow waist of our island and left all the island men trembling with fear, and me among them. I will always have that feeling, but I'm strong enough now to visit the sea and live on it a while. It has been my life, good and bad. And the sea provides. The sea provides. The, uh, the oldies knit these pretty jerseys for us. The widows, they keen their yarn and knit this pattern into each one of them. Every town along both coasts has its own pattern, and this is ours. Would you like to know why they knit our jerseys at night? The sheep are asleep at night and are content. They think the jerseys would be the better for it. Now, when a man floats into our harbor and the fish have taken out his eyes and nibbled off his lips, 
we can tell by his jersey where he might have come to us from. And so he gets brought home. <laughs> but the cleanest burial is when you slip away and are gone. You should never be found by another man. You should make sure you go deep and not ever rise to the surface. Let them think of you the way you looked the morning you went out. You shouldn't drift down the coast looking for your harbor where the fish eat from you for days and then wash up on shore putting frights into people and asking to be buried all over again, only this thing in the ground. Anyhow, that's why we wear these very pretty jerseys. They settled the question of dress six days out of seven. But I was going to read you sonnets, wasn't I? From this idiot book I'm meant to have written. I was going to tell you that the sea is a single great arm holding us all in our place or some such nonsense. Instead, I'll tell you a short one. We are now weavers. We are now caulkers. We are now painters. We are now young. We are now rowers. We are now fishers. We are now masters. We are now men. We are now drinkers. We are now singers. We are now mourners. We are not dead. Yeah.